Good morning, uh, good afternoon to some of you, or good evening for those of you calling in from Asia. We appreciate your attendance. My name is Jerry Papadatis, and I represent Data Core Automation. I'm a 30-year-old veteran in small business IT consulting. I've helped many small companies become more competitive and productive through IT. I have with us Abhijit Chakraborty, our, our CTO, and Sagamitra Ghosh, DataCore's AutoML practice lead. We will reserve 10 minutes at the end of this presentation for Q&A, but please do try to use the GoToWebinar chat function. The first inquiries will be the first to be answered, and if you run out of time, we will, uh, we will send you an email with, uh, with a response. I'd like to begin by defining AutoML at a very high level. AutoML stands for automation, Automated Machine Learning, is a recent technology that automatically writes code to empower data scientists to program machine learning models to solve real world business problems. Next slide. All of the leading IT analysts are recommending now more than ever that all companies, large or small, utilize an independent third party for an assessment before committing to any investments in digital transformation. As you can see in this di diagram, we have five uh, automation practices, including AutoML. They're all preceded but what, but by what we call an automation ROI assessment. We have seen that measuring return on investment is not as dis difficult as it seems. The most challenging obstacle is the cultural debt. It weighs in more heavily than the technical debt, simply because most people are, are afraid to be told that they could have done something better. And the fact is most people do resist change. That's human nature. This is why an external unbiased consultant is always a wise investment. Next slide. Oh, here's the slide that uh, we go into salaries. I have a son, I can relate to this. He's a freshman in college now. I remember two years ago when we were going at various majors and curriculums uh, and also we're looking at Effective salaries and probability of getting hired after graduation. The data scientist field led that category. It was an astounding 100%. You have that degree, you, you get a job. It's really that simple. The salaries on the left are from uh, indeed.com. And uh, I'm sure they're, they're uh, on the low side, especially if you're, you live in a metropolitan area. I'm based in New York City and I can show you these numbers are way off. And unfortunately, my son chose another major, but I will not go there today. Um, I'd like to say uh, that this is not intended to be a sales pitch. We want to establish context and to give you a peek into your return on investment. The number on the right, $469,000, is literally what your annual cost would be to outsource an entire offshore data sciences team. DataCore's DCS AI platform, AI auto ML platform, is given to you at no cost when you use our services. We also offer a free evaluation period. Please message me for any additional information. The only additional investment you will need to make is hiring an experienced business analyst on your own payroll. The assumption here in this particular scenario is that you're a small company that is taking the first steps into big data analytics. But even if you're a big company with an existing data science team, there are always ways to leverage offshore talent and augment your current practice. Next slide, please. Ah, look at this. Uh, Currently, we have a shortage of a quarter million data scientist jobs, and this shortage is expected to escalate to 85 million by 2030. 
according to various sources that we listed below. And currently, 67% of Fortune 5000 companies are hiring data scientists and engineers, most of them with very little experience. And that's even more critical, the lack of experience that these data, data science professionals have. They might have mathematical, coding, statistical, and IT skills, but none of that is really enough. Real world domain knowledge is even much less attainable today. And it is this current state of affairs is what propagated the auto ML industry. You will also see that as a consulting firm and trusted advisor, we were highly motivated to develop a method to aggregate and compare the machine learning capabilities of all the major cloud data service providers. I'm handing this over to my colleagues now who will tell you all about our DCS AI auto ML platform. Abhijit, can you start by telling our audience what inspired you to create this platform? Thanks, Jerry. And thank you again, everyone, for attending this session. The story is important uh, because once I tell you the story, so then you will realize that where it will be a fit and why you are doing it and why you will be doing it. So I like to highlight three basic points. Uh, one is the machine learning assessment work. Uh, we are now using the term ROI assessment. So we got our first project on machine learning in 2017. And for that, when we don't know uh, anything about it, we are consulting few professors, recruiting data scientists. They are expensive and resources, looking for resources who have statistical background. So after investing some amount of money and time, we finally started producing results. But everything took close uh, six to eight months. Yes, literally six to eight months when we finally able to provide our first machine learning output to our client. So in the initial problem was that none of us were sure like what algorithms will work against the data provided by the client. So it's a trial and error method and we tried a few algorithm. So after six months, we found that, yeah, okay, this is the algorithm that could be a best fit. And, and that time it was creating accuracy 55 to 62% prediction, which is not at all a very satisfactory result. And if you compare now using this platform, uh, we don't need to have uh, a, a excellent data scientist uh, to, the, to do the initial assessment job. We have actually transformed and trained few of our .NET resources, Microsoft .NET developers into this field and created a new group uh, and we are now calling uh, citizen scientists. So now using this AutoML platform, uh, they can produce the result on the first day of, uh, of the assessment if the data is ready, a good and level, just uh, uh, the first day. I mean, just compare the first day versus six months uh, trying to understand what are the algorithms or which algorithm will go with my use case. So that's the number one uh, and the main point uh, for me to think about something which will help industry uh, struggling with find out the algorithm to start with the process. Second one is the trust factor. So even after uh, giving an or getting an output of 62 percent our client had concern on our result and even our capability we are a mid-sized company we are not a very big player people don't know us so 62 percent they are not happy i also found later that they had given the same job to another company uh, and I, I that time deep learning term was kind kind of a new i should not say new but it's like a buzzing word people are trying to understand the difference between machine learning and deep learning. So that company is doing deep learning technique on the same data. And also I found that he has given the, uh, the same data to a data science uh, students in a Boston based college. Why? The answer is simple because he wanted to make sure uh, our result is good. And so that he can rely on that before going into the market. I, I hope that some of you have already faced these situations. Like one side, if you get a 99%, 98% accuracy, you are concerned too. For the same reason, you are concerned with the value of 62%. Because you are doing by yourself. Your data scientists are claiming that it is 98%. And sometimes you are getting 62%. Is this right figure? 
Is this okay? Can I trust it? Can I go to the marketplace and say we offer 99% or 98% accuracy? So there is a risk, uh, and, and you all you all feel even even you have a very good, excellent data scientist, but still you feel the risk whether you will go with that result or not. And now what we have done, we have incorporated Microsoft, Google, Ace2, and our own develop AutoML providers, and now for same data set. We, four different results are coming out from our platform. Two are from the best cloud-based AutoML provider. One is from the best uh, open source AutoML provider and one from a native. So the, actually the idea came up like when I was, I used to watch elections exist poll. And when I see that one company is giving an exit poll and the other company, what he's doing he is doing a poll or poll concept. Like he is taking the exit polls of different companies, and he is either aggregating the result or putting some weighted method. So I thought, like, if we can have like four different set of AutoML providers, and that's the starting point. A data crew will add more AutoML provider in near future, I'm sure. And at least whenever I'm getting 62 percent, if out of four, at least three AutoML provider are giving me 62 percent, it makes me feel more confident that yeah. This is good. Uh, everyone is 63, 62, 62.5, you know, and if one is 99% and three are 66, so I would I would consider the 366 percentage. So, so nowadays what we are doing, sometimes we are aggregating all four results before delivering it to a client, or sometimes we are we are using some weighted method to make sure the, the client can uh, trust the figure. So I hope uh, you understand the trust concept. So I have discussed the very basic assessments concept where you can use AutoML and our platform. And second, uh, I use trust factor, which you don't uh, get from just running Istio. You need to have more AutoML provider, which we did. Uh, by the way, uh, you can always send questions uh, using the chat box. Uh, uh, we will try our best at the end to answer you back. I know already you will, some of you have some questions and that's fine. Uh, we welcome all questions. Please note it down and send this to our chat box. So the last one uh, is kind of, uh, you can say automation or the new concept we are talking about MLOps. So, you know, in companies, if you feel that you have data scientists, they are more focused on training the model, uh, the predictions, accuracy, they get involved with that. They are not uh, you know, trained enough or there is not the subject to do the deployment or the maintaining the upgrade and monitoring the model every time. So this is not for data scientists. They mainly involved with the data analysis and algorithm, all these things. So what you need, you also need uh, in a data AI based project, you need data engineer to create the data. You need DevOps engineer so that they understand the deployment strategy. And at the end, when you are done with everything, you need visualization experts. So basically, if you just start with the AI project, you need a large team with data scientists, with DevOps engineer, data engineer, and the visualization team. And now with us, we have a platform that's not only made for running AutoML, that's also made for doing MLOps. And now we are connecting MLOps with the DevOps so that it can go to anywhere. And it's it's a completely automated method of deploying your model uh, as a, a, the frequency what you recommend for your case. And as we are using the, the Kubernetes container concept, uh, it is stored in cloud, it can go anywhere. So you don't need a human interaction. So in summary, uh, as I know you are very excited to see the demo, I just want to summarize so that you can understand where you are going. I said about the assessment part. Uh, I talk about the trust factor of generating results. I talk about the automated deployment part of the model. So uh, we try to create a single platform, uh, mainly targeted for the small and mid-sized companies. Who, who like to generate a lot of return of investment implementing machine learning, and also uh, to protect large organizations before they spend millions of dollars uh, in doing uh, recruiting many people and suddenly you know realize that all are useless. Uh, I want we wanted to make them you know use AutoML, make sure our get get four result, make sure this is going to work for you, and then you you buy you. Hire many scientists, you, you want to fine tune the machine learning, well, that's fine. So another problem we realized, like once you recruit many data scientists in your office, so you are not a machine learning company, you are just 
solving your business problem. Say you solve your business problem already. What you're going to do with these expensive resources? Where you are going to engage those resources? Are you going to fire them? Or are you going to keep them for just maintaining your 10 hours monthly support work? So that is also a point uh, for a, a, a business and CEO to, th or CEO to think about. So our AutoML platform will be given to a customer as a pay as you more. So when you want, use that, pay for the infrastructure, license cost, and uh, if we need our help. And that's it. Again, uh, it will be driven by the automated process and support. So you don't need. So think about Data Core. We have a virtual team of data scientists from Microsoft, Google, H2, and our own data scientists. We created a virtual team cleverly because the AutoML, we haven't developed Microsoft AutoML. But virtually, I, we are going to bring the Microsoft data scientists, Google data scientists in front of you because those are more trustable than any company. So a single team uh, that can serve your purpose and it's not at all expensive. Uh, so that's kind of our AutoML platform. Uh, now I like uh, Shangamitra to proceed with the actual presentation and demo. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, good morning. This is just to show you the face behind the voice. So we'll start, thank you Abhijit. You're welcome. So every crisis in life are challenges from which we learn to do better. Humankind has never faced a bigger challenge than COVID-19. We are well, hope you are doing too. Our projects were already hosted in cloud, so we neither had to go through mitigation plans of moving servers, nor had any downtime. This is not being lucky. It is having a vision. Planning for future, keeping up with technologies, COVID-19 has taught us how important it is to harness the power of automation. Traditional machine learning model development is resource intensive, requiring significant domain knowledge and time to produce and compare dozens of models. It is time to improve our processes, boost efficiency and speed, optimize our talents. If you are one who learns from the past and looks into the future, Join us in our webinar today. Your journey begins here. Logging in for a glimpse to the data course AutoML platform. Now I will not go be going through the text that you see in the slides over here. Please do read them. If you have any questions on any of the points here, please do put in the chat box. What I'll try to do is I'll try to give you more inputs on, from each of these slides so that you have a proper understanding. So what is the objective? Understanding without necessarily having the knowledge of complex models and algorithms, which needs to be regulated for optimal performance. And as Abhijit already mentioned, as we have multiple platforms and interfaces in the single platform, you can gain your confidence by comparing the data accuracy. There are so many options in the market today. Why will you come to DCS AI or to ML? So why? Why are you going to approach us? In recent times, the demand of data science and machine learning has increased in such a way that it has outpaced the availability of highly skilled data scientists and machine learning experts. For this reason, the area of ML remain un inaccessible and highly expensive. Predictive data analysis is out of reach of businesses with small IT budgets, SMEs, independent professionals, journalists, social activists, etc. Even for startup companies, actually. Automated machine learning came into the picture to automatically find and train machine learning models, so the models no longer need to be created by ML experts. The AutoML algorithms will analyze your data and pick the best model for you. AutoML also takes out the need for hyperparameter tuning and data augmentation. We will elaborate further in coming slides and of course tell you about the bonus service that we have that is Data Core Custom LML Services. Please welcome to the world of DCS AI AutoML. Due to time constraint, today we will share with you few interesting and important sections of this pipeline so you may get a flavor of this robust yet simple tool. We can connect any time again if you're interested, if you're curious enough, 
contact information will be shared at the end. And again, you have the chat box for your questions today. Data scientists, analysts, and developers across industries can use automated ML to implement machine learning solutions without extensive programming knowledge, save time and resources, leverage data science best practices, provide agile problem solving. The DCS AI AutoML pipeline and MLOps, what you see over here, this is just a pipeline of a wider pipeline. You should note that we are sharing with you today only the ML and AutoML section of a very wide pipeline. To get a better understanding, you should know we have an end-to-end -end automated pipeline starting with an automated data management team for data cleaning and data processing Handshaking with automated machine learning team, which we'll discuss today for machine learning and predictions, which is finally sent to the visualization team for interactive analytical dashboards in Power BI. So using MLOps for a continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline for the ML AI project, use your Azure DevEx pro DevOps project for build and release and deployment pipelines along with Azure machine learning services for model retraining, pipeline, model management, and operationalization. Build and train reproducible models, package and deploy your models, automate your workflows, monitor and manage them, apply governance and control, automate the end-to-end -end ML lifecycle with Azure Machine Learning and Azure Pipeline through MLOps, which is available in a platform. So in Azure AutoML, which we'll discuss one of them today, Azure AutoML and its prerequisites. Azure AutoML is the process of automating the time consuming iterative tasks of machine learning model development. It allows data scientists, analysts, and developers to build ML models with high scale efficiency and productivity, all, all while sustaining model quality. Automated ML democratizes the machine learning model development process and empowers its users, no matter whether they have the data scientist expertise or not. We have prerequisites for our training data in this platform. It must be in tabular form, it must be labeled, and the value to predict and target column must be in the data. We will show this when we have a demo video later on. We are going to extensively look into this. Few important characteristics. Click train to internally prepare for internal preparation like feature engineering, factorization, encoding. You do not have to think about this. These are all internally handled and end users do not have to worry about this. Deep learning is enabled in our portal. You just have to deploy the best fitted model monitor your ML applications for operational and ML related issues. Now, as Abhijit mentioned, we already have two high standard interfaces like Azure AutoML and Google AutoML and an open source H2O.AI AutoML. Why do we have another DCS automated ML? This is customized. It is a service provided by Data Core. It's automated ML, not simply machine learning. It's low infrastructure cost. It trains high quality custom machine learning models with minimal expert intervention. And it covers the complete pipeline starting with input of data sets to the deployment of the machine learning model. And this is the bonus which I was talking about. Other than the four automated ML services, what you can have from a platform, you have a bonus DCS custom machine learning services. When AutoML is limited, Data Core still covers you through the same platform with this custom machine learning service. When you have to do perform complex uses, when you have to perform complex use cases, which are not easily doable using AutoML, you need unsupervised learning, this is where you come to. You, you can, we have many POCs done. We have many examples done. 
So maybe what you have in mind, you just have to tell us what you need and we may already have it ready for you. <coughs> Sorry. So let's go to the demo. So the demo will be the actual, <clears throat> sorry, the demo will be the actual platform which you will be able to see. So before uh, Shangamitra starts the demo, uh, let me just uh, talk about this platform. Uh, yeah, so sure. You understand maybe. what is the expectation uh, in today's session as this is a very uh, time constant session It's very difficult to show the entire platform. So we thought that uh, we will we will choose one of it, uh, we and we chose Azure. So Shangavitra is going to demonstrate the the Azure AutoML a full cycle, uh, we, uh, and and we, we try to uh, give you a glimpse of what can be done. So um, and uh, here, uh, as I said uh, earlier, that we chose uh, two uh, cloud-based provider, one is two open source and one native. This is just the beginning. So as everyone is adding the plugins, so we'll be adding more plugin in your future. And also the connectivity. Uh, right now, you can use uh, any flat file. Um, right now, any Azure Blob for Azure, particularly Azure Blob Storage or Azure Data Lake. All connectivity is built, but it's ongoing process. Uh, it's every time, every year, every month, it is getting updated with more facilities. So for now, uh, whatever you see, it is going to connect with Blob Storage and Azure Data Lake or a file. And deployment is con completely an Azure container-based deployment. And here you will see only the, the MLOps part. Uh, but uh, we, if, you if you have any other uh, request or you want to see more, we can also show you how MLOps and Azure DevOps we have recently integrated. So through Azure DevOps, it can go to anywhere any platform, anywhere, any cloud. So that comes uh, later, maybe with, if you have any other requests. But for now, just watch one single uh, Azure best um, machine learning uh, flow here. And if you have questions, start writing it in the chat box. Uh, we have our technical team along with me. We'll try our best to give you all the answers. Shangamitra, back to you. Thank you, Abhijit. So this one might become a little bit technical. So do put in your questions as Abhijit said, as I'm repeating. But I hope you will be interested and you will find the platform very essential and interesting and contact us later on. So let us log in. Welcome to the live demonstration of our portal, DCS AI AutoML, hosted in cloud. We log into the application. Once we log in, we come to the home page. As you can see here, we have the four interfaces that we are already talking about multiple times. Azure AutoML, Google AutoML, H2O.AI AutoML, DCS Customized AutoML, and at the extreme right, we have the Customized Machine Learning. Hello. Yeah, yeah I can hear you guys. Can you hear uh, Amy? Uh, hello, who is it? Uh, someone named Duti. Amy, could you please? Uh, Duti, uh, Duti, uh, Duti you uh, we will, uh, you, can you put your questions through the chat box? Uh, I know you may have some questions. That's very good. We appreciate that. Let Shangamitra continue the presentation and you send your questions to chat box. We have a separate sessions at the end. Uh, we will talk about uh, your questions that time. Okay. Shangamitra, please proceed. Okay. So let's proceed. So the AutoML pipeline, what you see over here is in sync with the steps that the user goes through from starting of creating the workspace in Azure, computing, experimentation, deploying the model, using the model for prediction and monitoring the overall processes. So you have to go through a few of the steps to complete the machine learning life cycle. And each of the above pipeline, what you see, it is in sync with what the tiles or the steps that you have to go through in the platform. So let's start with creating a workspace. To create a workspace, you have to provide unique workspace name, resource group, subscription ID as registered in user, location to create your workspace. You can say this is a container where the rest of your steps of ML will be cooking. This is where you will upload your data set 
and you're going to access for the next steps. Once your workspace is successfully created, you will be able to see a preview of the workspace that you have created so that you can proceed to the next important steps. So the workspace is successfully created and this is the preview and AutoML underscore WS is the one we have created. After your workspace is created, what we do is compute. A compute target is a designated compute resource or environment where you will run your training script or host your service deployment. To create the compute cluster, select your existing workspace which you just created and select a scalable VM. I repeat, scalable VM. Reason being, if you have a higher volume of data complexity, you can change the VM size depending on your requirement. But if you are not that aware of your data or what kind of VM to choose from, you can definitely go for default. But this is scalable, which is an important feature in the platform. Enter a unique name. Please remember names should be unique and whatever you are creating, it should match with it. Otherwise, it is not going to work. This is an important repetition, which I will be repeating now and then. Select cluster category from the drop down menu to run your training script or host your service development. It can be training category or an inference category, depending whether you're publishing or you are training. So your computation is ready. Once you have successfully computed, we are going to upload the training data set. Automated machine learning supports the data that resides on your local desktop or in the cloud, such as Azure Blob Storage, but it is not completely, you, we can say that this is, we can have plugins where you can have other ways of uploading from direct table or databases. So as we are training, we are going to upload. And today for this demonstration, we are taking from local. So once your data set is uploaded, you can have a preview of the top 10 records just to see that everything is in order and you can complete your data set. As if you remember, I said during the presentation when we were, I was talking in the presentation that we had few prerequisites. And one of the prerequisites of this platform is it should be labeled data. So for this demonstration or this example, the training data set which we loaded, this label is that target. So the target variable or the label. So here we have taken as an example of a retail data set where we are going to, where we are going to actually find out the threshold of customers who are going to either churn or non-churn, that is leave or stay. So to this is the label of the training data set that we have uploaded. And what is the importance of getting this threshold? The importance of getting this threshold is if you can understand or identify the customers who are going to churn in time, you can have promotional offers and retain them. This is the objective of this prediction. So once your data set has been uploaded successfully, Next, what we are going to go is to AutoML experiment. This is one of the most important and complex process, of course, but complexity, we do not have to think about it. We just have to go through the process. In AutoML experimentation, there are few more steps. There are four steps, actually, which, according to this pipelines, it covers the train model, package model, and validate model. So let's get into experimentation. <coughs> As I said, AutoML experiment has four steps, being environment setup, data preparation, experimentation, and deployment. So let's go for environment setup. You have several options to configure your automated machine learning experiment. In experiment setup, you are going to environment setup, enter the unique name that enters your workspace, and then you create your environment. Once the environment is created, you go for data preparation. In the data preparation, we take different parameters in the scenario like classification, regression, forecasting, etc. Here today for this demonstration, we are going for a classification scenario. Select the uploaded training data set what you had uploaded earlier. So your data is ready. 
Now we are going to go to the experimentation process. For the experimentation process, what we need to do is, we are going to see the preview and um, just before that, if I, I know this is a little bit technical, so I'm taking a break. If you have any questions till now, please do put it in chat box and then we are going to go on. I hope everyone is with me. Everyone can follow me. I know it's fast, but I hope everyone can follow me. Do contact us so that we can talk to you in details with whatever queries you might have. Experimentation is a very interesting step. Automated machine learning trains multiple machine learning pipelines. Each pipeline training is known as an iteration. We select a matrix. You can say the matrix is the unit where you will use the training to generate the model. For us, the matrix will be accuracy. You will see that in, in just uh, in the next frame. <clears throat> You can specify a number of iterations using iterations parameter. You can specify maximum iterative time. And then you can proceed. Here also I want to put in another point that again, if you are, these are input fields, but if you think that you are not aware of how many iterations to go through, what experimentation time you need to put in, you can always keep the default. If you don't put anything, it's going to take a default value on its own and you are good with it. You do not have to worry at all. So please put in the parameters for the experimentation and then click on train. Clicking on train for internal preparations for feature engineering, encoding, etc. Your model is trained. And this is one of the important part or interesting thing you will see the algorithms. Here we are showing you, or it's giving you a preview of best of 10, 10 iterations. And if you look at the algorithms column, you will see the different algorithms that it has gone through to generate your best model. In this demonstration, you can see it has undergone through stack ensemble, voting ensemble, SGD, random forest, light gradient boosting, etc. So these are the, you can say these are the listing to show you that the, uh, when it's generating the model, these are the algorithms that has been used to generate your best model. Once your mess model is ready, final step is to go into deployment. Deploying the model is basically a container that will allow, allow to run our model code. That is the winning model on a specified environment and handle incoming requests. So what you see on top, the best model is AutoML and digitization. That is the run ID. That is the unique run ID that helps you identify and extract the model using a valid service name and deploy method. We are using here ACI as we are training. Azure Machine Learning Services has pretty awesome functionalities included in automated machine learning services that will do all the hard work for you when you're deploying. Deploy your best model. It's on the leaderboard page you previously viewed to see how different models were performing. When you deploy the model, Azure ML Services generates an endpoint. That is a deployed URL, you may say, that has been deployed in a container in Azure Cloud, which is now ready to receive HTTP requests from us. You will see that here in this experimentation which we are going through right now, we have deployment as the final step here, and we have a deployment as well as on the homepage of Azure AutoML. Though we have the deployment in two places, there is no difference. The reason being, if you are going through the experimentation process, you can deploy your model to that internal deployment button. But if your model is already ready, you have done it maybe before you are ready with the model, you already have everything in place, you do not need to go through that experimentation process again, then of course you can skip that and come to the deployment because deployment you can do it at different times. So it is not required that you need to go through that experimentation process again and again. If you do not need to do that, just use the deployment tile which we have in the home page. But the process is entirely same. You have to do whatever steps you did over there. You have to do the same thing over here. 
and then we are just going to deploy the model that is get that endpoint URL for your uh, model to actually to get that HTTP request. Here you will be, here you are able to see you will be able to see the details of the deployment with that endpoint what I'm talking about the rest endpoint there there'll be a summary where you will be able to see what are your deployment details it will just come in the next frame <clears throat> here here's the summary the basic information the summary and we are going to see the rest endpoint url This is uh, just next to, uh, just after compute type, you see the rest endpoint URL. So your model is, your training data is, experimentation is complete, your model is deployed. So what next? Next is, if you want to see at a different point of time what you have done, so that is what we are going to see. Like this monitoring step, what you see over here, this monitoring step is actually not, you can say it's not a hardcore pipeline of the ML life cycle, but it is very, very important. You cannot skip this. Reason being, you need to monitor your, uh, how, your, how your model is running, how your system is running, whether you need to change your model, the other kind of monitoring services these things need to be monitored and managed all through because your model will not be constant for your lifetime. It cannot happen that you upload your training data set once, you generate a model, and that model is going to work for month after month, year after year. So monitoring to see everything is healthy or not, this is very, very important. And then you can, of course, go for a new model or you can change your VM size or you can go into other details looking into. This is just an example of a monitoring dashboard. This is not the ultimatum, of course. Okay, so once uh, again, as I told you, monitoring dashboard is not a pipeline, uh, not exactly a pipeline of experimentation, generating model and predictions. So next, what we'll see is predictions. Okay, for predictions, this is the most interesting part, maybe not the most important part because most important part is experimentation, but one of the most interesting part is the seeing the prediction of what the hard work that you did. So what we are going to do is we are going to upload the test data to get the prediction. Once your prediction is done, you can, up, you can this is a preview of the, uh, uh, data set, the test data set, and then when you submit, you're going to get the predictions. So predict what predictions here, what you can see the top 20 records over here is once you, uh, of course, you remember we had the label column and against the label column, we will have a prediction column for churner and non-churner. So that is what we are going to see over here. And other than this top 20 records, because you don't need the top 20 records, you need all the records, you have the download button on top on which you are going to have the entire predictions. So that was the label and this is the prediction. You can compare them and see. So you can download it as CSV, share with your clients, compare the label column with your prediction column once you have shared with your customers or internally, you can create mind-blowing interactive dashboards to make decisions. Another thing what I want to share over here, that is uh, whatever we did here, whatever the steps, what we went through, I think so I missed it somewhere or maybe it's, uh, we did not show it here. That is, um, you can exactly get a summary of what details that we had performed, okay? So you can have that particular, you can have the details of what uh, deployment details or what are the algorithms that had been used to generate the model. We have a screen for that too. Somehow I missed it today, I'm so sorry. But of course, when you come back to us, we can go through that in details. To see the confusion matrix, 
true positives. So you know what's happening. Actually, we do have a dashboard for that. But I, I'm so sorry I don't see it over here today. Okay, here it is. Okay, here it is. That's great. So here, that's what I was talking about. The information summary, the iteration list. So that because once you're going through the experimentation, you could see this. But once you have completed the experimentation, you to come back later on and to see that what model has been generated, what we have done to get a summary, to understand what happened and to compare and to see if anything needs to be changed. That is what we have as an experimentation detail summary over here. Okay, that's good. I did not miss this. So here, this is the confusion matrix, the, the actual values against the predicted values, the true positives, the deep orange one, and the false positive, false negative, and true negative. Those who are already working in this field, they'll completely understand what I'm talking about. Others can please contact us and know more about it. So that is what we have today as a demonstration, live demonstration, folks. I hope you have liked it. So we'll next, uh, what we are going to see is just a very quick breeze through on the other interfaces. Now, this one is the Google AutoML that you see in what we have in our platform. So same as Azure AutoML, there are a few fundamentals that will happen for all your AutoML interfaces. That is be, whether you're in Azure AutoML, you create a workspace for Azure. If you're in Google AutoML, you create a bucket. Whether you're in H2AI, you create a cluster. Other, the, the other steps like uh, execution, experimentation, uh, prediction, uploading data set, whether it's training or for prediction, it is test data. It is more or less same for all the interfaces. So in Google AutoML, we create a bucket and we proceed with the other steps, same as in Azure. Then I'll show you a very quick glimpse of H2O.ai. Here we are going to create a cluster, create data set, experimentation, and then finally prediction again. And then for our customer Customize DCS Auto Data Core Auto ML. Because this is completely customized, we just have two steps. One, one is upload your training data to get your auto ML experimentation done. And the finally, the test data for prediction. Because this is specific, highly specific to the requirements of the customer. And now, um, as we already have four interfaces, and if you remember, I told you after we finished the machine learning, it goes into the um, visualization. So once we are done with this demonstration, I will show you another example of the dashboards what we have already created in Power BI. So this is the Azure AutoML, Google AutoML, H2O.ai dashboard and customized and finally what is the utility or the benefit benefit is because we have run them in all four you could you have the advantage of doing a comparative study for an aggregate to see how that all the four platforms have performed it is possible that you're more interested in the open platform only or you're more interested or more uh, have confidence in azure auto ml only we have options you can choose only one or more than one but of course, if you go for all four, you can have a comparative study to gain confidence. So that's all we are going to do today with the AutoML demonstration. So next, I believe we are going to do the Q&A session. So Amy, yeah, can you take over, please? And thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you, Shankar Mitra. And thank you, everyone, again, for joining. I'm sorry we didn't do the questions throughout the presentation, but we wanted to make sure we could get through the demo. Um, so I'm going to go straight to the questions. We'll probably have time for a few. Um, Abhijit, I'm thinking this one is for you. Yes. How does the system choose the right ML algorithm for somebody's data? Yeah. Uh, th that's a very interesting question, and that's the, that's the key questions of the entire sessions, and that's the beauty. So the answer is automatically. We do, you don't do. That's why I said 
when I, in my opening speech, I said I have converted my .NET resources into machine learning expert. This is not very easy, actually. They are not doing the algorithm part. So your data, once you give the data to the system, our, the AutoML, whether it is Azure or Google or H2 and our, our algorithm, they detect, they detect the algorithm. That's why I said we spend six months to find out what algorithm will work for that. So that's the beauty of this tool and the platform. AutoML itself find out the algorithm. And that's why we said that's the smart approach uh, before you start your machine learning. Give it to AutoML, give it to Data Core AutoML platform. Let them do the assessment. You spend like $5,000, $10,000, that's it. You don't need to invest a full-fledged cycle. So the simple answer is it done. it is done automatically. No one select the algorithm. But when the result come up to you, you have 10, or 20 results uh, in, a, in a sequential order from the best, you, you can choose any one. Uh, at this moment in our platform, our platform choose the best one, which produces the highest accuracy. But your next version, which is coming up in July, you will have the option to choose any one you like. Great, thank you, Abhijit. Okay, another one. Um, I already have data scientists. What value would this bring to me? It's for it's for who me? I was thinking you could as well, but we can pack yeah, it on yeah. to an issue. Okay, yeah, yes. First of all, you must you must understand here in this meeting there will be many data scientists listening to us. Uh, you are the great people. You are the one of the best people the industry demand, uh, and your job is very appreciated. And think about this: the automatic tool, whatever you're going to use, it is it is the it is the work of data scientists like you people. What we are coming up, we are coming up with a smarter approach to save, especially in the mid-sized and small companies who, who don't have the money to spend uh, on such expensive uh, an initiative. But data scientists are required very much. Where it is required, suppose uh, you run with the AutoML platform and you get something, you know, with the four aggregated result, but still you believe that, you know, uh, can I do an unsupervised uh, approach and see what result is coming up, which we are also doing. But we are doing inside our customized uh, AutoML, uh, not AutoML, customized machine learning, because that's kind of made for unsupervised part. So one approach could be uh, you use our platform uh, with the AutoML approach and get the result from one, two, and three. Uh, it's not a huge expense. So kind of assessment work and the trust factor with the percentage and then uh, as a as a CEO or CIO, you know already what could be coming from this data, and then give it to your data scientists to work with their other techniques, uh, and that could be another trust factor. So you already got some trust factor from our platform, and then you use your data scientists also, and then you see where, where they are coming up, and they should be in a hop, upper side of this percentage, but not every time it happens. But we have seen our project that we AutoML generated 64%. And then the, our data scientists work on some unsupervised approach on the same business case, and then they are coming up with 68%. So it's a 4% gain. But this 4% gain is much, but you are also investing a lot of money. But again, we are inc not encouraging to you not to recruit data scientists, but we are using, we are encouraging to use our platform to save the, the lot of money before you go ahead uh, implementing a huge decisions uh, for this 4% or 5% gain. Great, thank you, Abhijit. Jerry, I think this one is for you. We are a small company, have not done any machine learning. How do we get started and what does it cost? Uh, quite simply, uh, it's, uh, that's what we're doing that makes it so easy. Uh, the starting cost is, uh, begins with a typically a two week evaluation period and the and we've already purchased all the subscriptions to the providers that we're using. And really, uh, that those subscriptions are built into the cost of our services. Uh, our, uh, our offshore, if you were to have a, a team of four people working full time, I already shared that cost with you. That's less than a half million dollars a year. But you could start off very small just with uh, one person who, uh, who uh, used the auto ML model. And then, and then you grow after you get a, a after you realize a small win, where you've seen a return on your investment. So the the answer is it's a it's a small investment which you 
which can, can literally just be the utilization of two offshore people that will cost you less than, less than $40 an hour. Uh, but the, obviously there's many scenarios, but if you're just getting started, this is, this is absolutely the, the ideal initial investment. <clears throat> Great. Um, so that's really all the questions we have time for, unfortunately. It's 10.59. Um, but we will be answering these questions individually. We took note of who asked them, and we'll be getting back to you. Um, so, Jerry, uh, if you want to close it out. Hello again. This is Jerry Papadatis. Uh, I have here my email address. P please do not be shy. Send me emails, any questions at all, and I'll forward them to the appropriate personnel. But I would like to address our, our business model, um, how we how we price this service. The one thing that uh, that you should be aware of is that we do not hold you hostage to any to any technology at all. You have a choice of working with us. We could set you up, um, and you could build. Your, we could help you build your own practice, and then you can use us on an as need basis, or you can outsource the entire department to us. But one thing for sure, if you're a smaller company that's just getting started in the field of data analytics. There is no better way to get started. It's, it's, it's not a wise decision to, to hire a data scientist and get started on this path. So uh, please uh, uh, send me an email and uh, I'll work something out with you. Um, the assessment piece of it, I, I, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about today, but we ran out of time. But um, the assessments are non-obligatory. And they're outcome-based. In fact, our entire pricing model is both fixed cost and outcome-based, eliminating the risk of doing business with a new service provider. That said, I'd like to thank you everybody again and uh, wish you a great rest of the week.